Hi there, welcome back. So today I'm going to show you how to calculate Bayesian average uh, value from any uh, specially distributed data set. For example, if we have any raster data for precipitation, if we have any temperature graded data or raster data. If we have raster data, the basic thing we have to even calculate the Bayesian average value, right? We have some kind of uh, graded data. For example, we have the DEM data for this case. So if you want to calculate the average a value, basin average value for any specific watershed. So how can we calculate that one? So that is a very important thing to know, right? In hard logic calculation, sometimes we use a lump model, for example, HEC SMS model. It is a semi-distributed model. Sometimes you want to run this model as a lump model. So for that case, you need to write, calculate the basin average precipitation, basin average temperature, basin average everything, every parameter, if you want to activate your ET, means evapotranspiration module, then you need to calculate the Bayesian average value. And if you are going to run the model as a distributed model, if we have grid, then you have to calculate the gridded input parameter. But most of the cases for simple run, people just use a lump model. And in order to do that, you have to calculate the Bayesian average value. So we have an option here, I'm going to show you that, that is called journal statistics. And we can do the same thing. I have the code in R and I have the code in Python that can do the same job. So if you are familiar with GIS, then you don't need to write even any programming language. So it will automatically do that. And if you have many files, for example, if you have time series files for uh, several hundred files, right? So you have to do the same thing by clicking one by one. But if you don't want to do that, there is an option uh, in the future video, we'll see that we'll build a model, or it's called model builder, right? So that will do the job for you. It will look through the directory or the folder where you have your input files, and it will just do the job for you. And you have to do the same thing, right? So I'll show you that. Definitely, I on I have one video. Uh, it, it is like a one year, more than one year old. So it is in the Hick SMS playlist, where I already demonstrated that one how to. Uh, create base in average precipitation for heck SMS model. But today I'm going to just uh, show you as a part of this uh, full package of heck SMS tutorial that how to calculate base in average values or from any roster. Since we have the DEM value for our watershed, right? Buffalo Sun just into watershed located in Houston, Texas. So we are going to calculate the base in average. So for calculating base in average value, what we need, we need only the watershed. Based on that watershed, it will calculate the value. Let me just quickly share my screen and uh, describe you what we are going to do right now. So here it is, right? We already have idea about that. We already calculated the hillshade. We calculated even flood inundation map. You have an idea about that one. So now I'm going to turn off that layer, okay? And then I'm turning on that watershed layer. So these are the Hawk watershed, not Hawk 10, right? So we have even HAC 12 as well. We can, then we can calculate HAC 10 as well. We have both watershed, right? Uh, for example, uh, if I want to open that say, attribute table, so what we're going to see here, see, it's nothing but we have HAC 8, HAC 10, and HAC 12, okay? And we have this name of this watershed, okay? Separate watershed. So what we are going to do, we'll calculate the average elevation right for example it will give you we're getting shape area right shape area in terms of we don't know the unit okay do we know that no in order to calculate the area in kilometer square or in square mile we have to okay let me just area sq kilometer okay you want to calculate area in kilometer square so what do you have to do just uh, click double and we're done okay so once you are done with that one, just right click here and then select calculate geometry and it will give you different options, right? Area. This area and perimeter to giving you that one. And here we can select the square feet. It is in a square feet probably by default because the unit is in a straight plane. And if you want to change it to square kilometer there, and click OK, so it will calculate the values in terms of a square kilometer. You can see that. Okay, so we have the area. Now, what we're going to do, we'll even calculate, we'll add one column 
and we'll calculate the average elevation value right this is this is basically the shape files but what we need we need to calculate the average elevation value for this shape right we have how many how many shapes we have here you can calculate that one okay we have like a 29 uh, 28 because it is starting from one so you have 28 sub order shade right hack 12 sub order shade so we already have idea how to calculate the area of any uh, shape file okay and then we are going to calculate the average elevation value for this watershed for this sub watershed for this each of this so we'll have even 28 average elevation value so if you want to even calculate the precipitation so you have to do the same thing it will give you the average precipitation value for this watershed because if you want to run any heck HMS model or any other model if you want to import that time series for basin average at outlet of any sub watershed we have to calculate the average right basin average value for this one even though since the basin is not that big so the distribution of rainfall it won't be uh, varying that much so we can use uh, one single value average value okay so that is even reasonable that's why you have to know the processing so how can you do that if your geoprocessing extensions are already turned on if not then click customize and then go to extensions and turn all this on then what you will have click on will use basically that journal statistics it is called journal statistics it will calculate all the statistics mean median average maximum minimum everything it will give you but out of these values we will use only the mean value because it is the uh, basin average value it will use that area you can even calculate by yourself because now you know the area right if you know the area and you can calculate the total value how can you do that we already have idea about that and we know the cell size right of this grid we know that cell size is 97.44 right and 97.44 so you can multiply that cell size and you can calculate how many cell we have for this is of this basin then you will have the total amount of that data and then you can divide that one by the area so you'll get the basin average okay so here it is if you click on arc toolbox and then here special analyst tool and after that you have to go to journal c we already calculated right we already used that tool math algebra we already calculated uh, values or contour using surface and now we are going to even calculate that one the last one journal statistics if you click that expand that one you have that different options journal geometry as table journal histogram it will give you the histogram for that basin average and then we are going to create that values of the statistics mean the mean median and the maximum minimum everything as a table and out of this table we'll convert it to excel right excel file so that is our goal because if you want to use that value you need to even export that as excel file and then we can convert it to csv right so that's why i'm selecting this one journal statistics as table but if you select journal statistics it will give you only the statistics but you can't even export that one so once we have the table we can export it so that's why i'm selecting this option i can play with every everything and then we can see what it is giving right so double click on that so now statistics so it is asking that input raster so which one will be our input raster so dem feet right or which one so we have the option here see it is the zone right based on the statistics will be calculated means it is the feature or it may be even raster since we are going to calculate the basin average so we are passing that basin that one right buffalo sends us into watershed and then journal field which field you want you have to specify let me just open it again and you can see which field you want based on the name right this name even the id this hack id is same this id may be same for few of them if you calculate that hack 12 definitely hack 12 is different for each one so to be on the safe side you can even select this name field okay if you select the name field it will give you that value based on the name so okay just this one hack 10 name that will be our field so it will calculate the value based on the name because if you have the values based on id you it may be misleading you may not understand where it is but if you know the name of the watershed or a sub watershed 
And if you have the value, then it is very convenient to even uh, interpret, right? So that's why Hawk 10 name. Every time you want to select anything, go to go back to that uh, attribute table and open that and see which one you need. So you have access to everything. So Hawk 10 name and input raster. Which one will be your input raster? That DEM fit that we already have converted, right? The vertical unit, you already changed it from meter to feet and horizontal unit you already converted from geographical to state plane and now it's asking where to save that since it is we already have the default geo database it is changing there so zonal stat okay zonal stat that's okay it will create and see in that field what will be the type of the statistics if you select that one if you want to select only mean it will give you only the mean value that is the base in average okay we call it base in average if you want to select all it will give you mean maximum minimum and range minimum to maximum and then a standard deviation and what will be the total sum and then mean max and then mean standard deviation and mean max mean so these are the statistics it will give you every every possible statistics it has and then you have the description here if you select all then what will be the output and if you select mean what will be the output and you have the description there so that is the benefit of using gis we have this help menu there on the right side of this window so i'm going to select all and then if i click ok then it's going to calculate the base in average right we can calculate it manually but since they already have the option so we can utilize that one so here it is we have that as table if i want to see whatever we have inside that one see it's there and based on that value, we can easily see that we have the name Hawk 10 name, right? And we have this because we have common names, some common names. So it is just interpreting as eight. And then see that count means these are the cell number, the raster value. And that is the area it is giving maybe in square feet. It doesn't matter. And then we have the minimum value because we selected that elevation right and then we have it is selecting the minimum and maximum it based on the location see the minimum value for the lower part is uh, minus 22.96 so it is giving the uh, six digit and we have the maximum one so maximum is 206 we know that minimum is this for the entire uh, area and it is giving us the range difference between this mean and max and that is the mean value for that suborder set because it is located on the highland and it is right so that's that and a standard deviation and some of these values we have so if you want to even export that one so how can you do that we have the option right there we can even convert so go to cartography or conversion okay conversion and then excel if you want to export it to excel it is that there right excel to table no we are going to convert from table to excel so select that one and import that table journal statistics and then it's gonna save it's gonna create there I'm gonna save it to uh, lab 2 okay tutorial inside lab 2 or outside of okay if I select that one let me just go back here okay I'm gonna select that name of the excel file journal statistics journal stat journal stat and then it will be xls file see it's just converting and it's done okay let me just go back to that tutorial and maybe it's there okay journal statistics it's there can you see that yeah if i double click on that it will open the same tabular value but in terms of excel sheet now we can even how manipulate anything we can even create table we can uh, pass this table right in your report or anywhere you can use that and if you have other information to add you can add that you can even change the type and options you have you can do that you can manipulate so this is how we can even calculate the journal statistics but this is the way we can do and um, i just uh, demonstrated that way but if you have other information that sometimes we are not gonna calculate journal statistics for dem because it is misleading uh, we just only calculate the 
meteorological parameter like uh, precipitation, temperature, humidity, and if you have any short wave radiation, long wave radiation for the calculation of, of other uh, loss, evapotranspiration loss, right? If you want to even add uh, the pin min montate, if you want to calculate the pin min montate, right, evapotranspiration loss, then you need different types of uh, values. And once you are done with values, we have to calculate the vaccine average using this one. So that is the way to calculate vaccine average. So practice by yourself in the next tutorial. I'll show how to download the precipitation value and even how to uh, do some calculation. We'll download rainfall data, right, that are within our study area. We'll find the gauges and we'll download that and we'll process. And you'll learn because we are just going deeper into, right, from very, very shallow level to the deep inside of this tutorial and to the more specific objective we have because at the end we are going to run a model, hydrologic model. So these are the pre-processing and how to create maps and other information. You already have idea about that one and we'll even use different module but for the sake of this course I'm just following the, uh, the guideline we have and you can just repeat all this process and you will even complete one grad level course or basic GIS course and you will be, I think, uh, medium level expert on that one. Okay. In the future videos, I'll show the advanced level. So that is another issue, but that will be outside of this um, uh, course. Okay. So that's it. I'm going to finish off here. And if you have any query or question, uh, let me know and I'll be happy to answer your question. I think if you follow exactly what I'm doing here, you won't face any problem unless it is related to your uh, software package or anything else. So good luck for you and thank you very much for watching and see you in the next tutorial.